Uh, lots of changes have really occurred in the, in the time with diabetes, and I've been practicing since 1996. And as we see this evolution in time and kind of what we've done now with these newer trials, cardiovascular trials, um, they evolved from 2007 when there was a meta-analysis done thinking that one of the agents TZD class was actually a cause for increased risk of cardiovascular events and as a result FDA stepped in and designed ways in which we were to further investigate the safety of all new drugs coming to uh, the market from 2008 and onward. And looking at the safety of these drugs we found that they're safe but then we stumbled across or kind of they predicted in the trials that there might be some cardiovascular benefits associated with them. So. In addition to other classes, the SGLT2 inhibitor class has been very exciting in seeing improvements in, in cardiovascular um, outcomes, particularly that in heart failure, but also the real exciting part now that we're seeing is the benefits also in, in kidney function, preserving kidney function, delaying onset for end-stage renal disease, and protecting from uh, microalbuminuria and so forth. So lots of benefits on the kidney and the heart, and we know that the, the kidney and the heart are, are intertwined together, um, working together as, as very unique systems. That's a great question because I think when we look at our patient populations right now, so I'm in endocrinology and we see a, a lot more patients in my practice with cardiovascular disease than perhaps people in primary care settings where they may be seeing more healthy patients with less chronic conditions. So in their practice setting, they may be seeing 15% of the population, 20% of the population has cardiovascular disease with their type 2 diabetes. In my practice setting, it could be as high as 40 or 50%. And then of course, cardiology, it's nearly 100%. So it does uh, really lead us into a different direction. So the usual screening for me when I was treating patients with, with medications is what was my A1C target, what was my glucose target, what was I going for? Now I have to kind of look deeper into the patient. Do they have chronic kidney disease? You know, Are they having a history of heart failure? Do they have cardiovascular disease? And that really changes the way in which I treat them. Well, in my lecture, we'll see on the ADA 2019 guidelines, it talks about patients that have diabetes without cardiovascular disease and those that have cardiovascular disease and kidney disease and it kind of gives you two different algorithms to work through to make those decisions but absolutely the, the one thing I think we need to keep in mind is just because the patients have been identified with having cardiovascular disease doesn't mean there's a large portion out there lurking with early cardiovascular disease that has not been identified yet.